and matter of um, uh, I'm only going to do It's high time. You know, we are in our We can start. Well, I came into politics because I I looked at the old scenario and I found out that majority of the people are running away from politics. Good to have you on this special program, sir. Thank you. Please, can we get to know you, sir? I'm Johnson A. Dasselman. I come from Edo State, the heartbeat of the nation, Nigeria. Why do you want to be Nigerian? And we have tried, you know, for the past 40 years, and Nigeria is looking for best practices that would, you know, solve all of the problem. I think over the past 40 years, you know, I have been trained, tested, and helped, you know, a lot of world class organizations, you know, to try to solve some of here to help you know address those problems the problem of infrastructure electricity good roads and then jobs our youth there are about 39 million people are unemployed and we want to create at least seven million jobs per year a lot of people will ask what is your experience do you know nigeria have you traveled far and wide in nigeria how do you want to rule a country that don't even know where i know nigeria i've been all over nigeria from the north south east and west I know the, the suffering on the land. Plus also have been to several countries all over the world and I have a lot of experience in public and private sector organizations. All of the large agencies in the union I have worked for, all of the private sector companies in the union I have worked for. I bring the experience of public and private sectors to come and transform Nigeria. I have been to the north, to the east, to the west, and every village I have, and I know that there is suffering in the land. Okay, uh, how long have you been in politics then? Uh, the po how long have you been in Nigerian politics? Nigerian politics. Yes. Uh, well, Nigerian politics is what you define it to be. So you want to ask me a question, how long have I... Are you partisan? Are you active you know, in, in political activities? Uh, yes, we have a Nigerian Democratic Congress Party, mm -hmm. a party that has been registered to bring best practices to Nigeria. And I'm one of the founders of that party. And uh, it took us you know, quite some time to do that. When we looked around the current platform, you know, of APC, PDP, and all of the political parties that are there, we made a conclusion that those parties are not for us because of, you know, some of the, you know, things that are going on. So we chose to register our own political party. We are a registered political party by June, January, actually January 10th to June this year will be almost six months that we have been registered. Fantastic. <laughs> okay, I, I might need to hurt you then. Mm -hmm. How do you see our democracy? Over 19 years, and we are still not there yet. We haven't gotten it right. Mm -hmm. We've had issues of corruption, terrorism, and a lot of security challenges here in the country. Mm -hmm. How do you want to fix that? Well, first of all, my goal is not to blame you know, those people that have been in power. First of all, look at this. When you have somebody that is in power that does not even have the qualifications to be in power, that's one thing. But my goal is to talk to the people of Nigeria about what I bring. I know for sure that you know, I have the best experience in public and private sector organizations to create jobs. You know, and I know how to do that. And I know that I can solve the security situations where we are a country of law and order. I know that we can deal with the infrastructure. I know we can deal with the electricity problem, the telephone system. When you call a, a typical Nigerian, the phone drops and then you cannot even have a conversation with that. These are issues that have permeated through the country. The, the gap between the rich and the poor is almost about, you know, 100% to one, where the, the rich are richer and the poor, you know, are poorer. So the goal is to create middle class and then to create jobs that will make those middle class to be successful and then to make sure that the youth of today become the leaders of tomorrow by giving them the opportunity to become, you know, what they deserve. Okay, uh, a lot of politicians do come and tell us this is what they want to do. Mm -hmm. We've been, we've had so much mm -hmm. over the years. Mm -hmm. Power, 
electricity, mm -hmm. uh, employment, security, mm -hmm. economy, mm -hmm. corruption. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, mm -hmm. it's same in same. Mm -hmm. and we have not had it right mm -hmm. until now. Mm -hmm. What is your blueprint? Are we sure you are going to do the job? Well, I think my credibility stands for it. I will ask people to go to our website, ndcp.ng. Look at my background, look at what I've done. Look at you know, what I've done in the public sector, what I've done in the private sector, what I've done for not for profit, what I've done for NGOs. I'm a man of results. I don't speak you know, what I don't believe in, or I do not you know, make promises that I don't fulfill. Now, I understand that in the government that you have to create an, a, an atmosphere for that. My goal is to work with you know, the House of Representatives and the Senate to be able to bring them to see the problem of Nigeria, you know, you know, behind the scene, even before you start voting for those kind of policies, so that you can unite people to be able to perform you know, what we need. See, the brother from the north and the sisters from the east or west and whatever, they all have one thing in common. They all will be very glad when we have electricity. So, first of all, when the people keep talking about tribalism and all of those other things, I don't believe in that because I believe that diversity is strength. Diversity is what makes us what we are. So, the guy from the north, from the west, from the east, from the north and south and so forth, they all want to be able to feed their own children. They want meaningful jobs. The youth over there wants a job today. And then people want electricity so that they can be able to make production. And then we right now run the worst deficit that you can find in the history of any you know, modern economy. 99% of our cars are all from abroad. 99% of our motorcycles are from abroad. 99%, I can go on and on, and that creates a lot of deficit. And the value of the Naira is 365 to 1, you know, to $1, and that is not good. So look at what I've done in the public sector, in the private sector, across the United States, across the entire world, what I've done in the public sector and the private sector, you will know that I'm ready for this challenge. Okay, uh, if you look at Nigeria itself, mm -hmm. we, we, we depend on petroleum oil. And of course, maybe lately a bit of agriculture, mm -hmm. you know, in our hands, mm -hmm. and the economy is not very poor and it's not in shape. Mm -hmm. How will you fix it? Here is the problem that Nigeria has. We have relied on one Oh yeah, as the only product that we have. My goal is to create a multi-dimensional economy. Oh yeah, will be one of them, but it will be actually be the last because we want to preserve that resources that we have. But manufacturing, where you know we are able to produce right now, our productivity is less than fifteen percent, which means that there are companies that wanted to produce that they can't produce because there's no electricity. So they move, they go to Ghana, they go to other places in the world. So when we have electricity, they can stay here. Then we have to have, you know, healthcare. It's a big business. And we want to create a single taxpayer system where the healthcare that the number one president gets is also what the average Nigerian will get. And we want to create, you know, multi-dimensional industry in service, you know, environment, telephone system, infrastructure, solar energy, high-speed trail. And when I was in Lagos, I was amazed that the same tiny roads that we had from going to the airport is the same tiny road we have after 40 years. That is not good. So we have to create a system that be able to use, you know, basically science, technology, and math to protect, you know, what the populations are and to look at our infrastructure. Now, the issue is not voting for the project. People vote money for this project, but this money goes into the hands of the deep pockets. So we have to create a system that prevents people from being corrupt, using technology, you know, to be able to, you know, you know at, at, attack corruption, creating effective, you know, work processes that, you know, that when somebody steals, you will even be able to detect that they are stealing from that system. And then making sure that the manual interventions where people are just collecting cash in tow boots with no receipts and all of those other things are no longer the place. We have modern technology that can do all this for us. I have done this in public sector, I have done it in private sector, I want to come do the same thing in Nigeria. A lot of people have said that our foundation is not right and mm. that is the pain of our problem in Nigeria. Mm. Um, you look at the constitution mm -hmm. with the people, mm -hmm. it was done by the military, mm -hmm. not, not by the people mm -hmm. and we still claim that's our constitution. Mm. There's a lot of laws inside that constitution. Mm -hmm that does not conform with modern day reality. Mm -hmm. How do you want to fix that? Well, first of all, 
we have to recognize one thing. Nigeria democracy is a young democratic system. We are only less than maybe, you know, 60 some years old. You cannot compare a young democracy with the large one. But what we do want is to eliminate the corruption from the system and then put people that are competent. I have met Nigerians all over the world that are the best in science and technology and everything. Every, every places I've been to, Nigerians that are super leaders in the world. We want to harness those brains and bring them for investment, bring them to use their technical power to solve the problem. So I don't want to blame the leaders of the past. I want to focus on the solutions of the future. Because the solution of the future, we can spend a lot of time talking about what didn't get done and what, you know, how this other problem get created and so forth. I'm not interested in that. I believe that the progress of Nigeria begins with me. It begins with my own attitude, my own education, my own expertise, my own experience. I want to f use that problem to solve Nigerian problem. And I'm encouraging Nigerians, both those that are you know, abroad and, you know, one here to look at the whole issue of the Nigerian system and said, what can I contribute? What I can, can I do for the nation? Not what I can steal away from Nigeria, but what can I give back to the nation? That's what, you know, I want people to focus on. When you look at Nigeria today, uh, there's no sense of patriotism again. Mm -hmm. and people don't believe that the government has done anything for them. Mm -hmm. So if they provide their own uh, social services for by themselves, mm -hmm. like school, mm -hmm. health, and uh, water, electricity. Mm -hmm. They don't have any any kind of relationship with the government. Mm -hmm. uh, how do you want to put that together? Well, right now, the Nigerian that is not working today is left for the judgment of the Nigerian people. But here is what I would do. When I say is that we will create jobs, we will create jobs. For example, for, look at the infrastructure. One of the things we would do, we would create a modern, a modern, uh, you know, town, you know, townhouse. How do you want to do that? First of all, take infrastructure. If you look at electricity, you look at roads, you look at, you know, trash collection, you look at, you know, all of the things. One of the things we would do, we would create a model of a typical Nigerian world class village, so that senators, you know, legislators, and Nigerians themselves can travel there and see it and say, this is the Nigeria that we all want. This is not something that you are doing on paper. This is a role model that we are going to replicate in every, you know, your political state. Now, let me caution one thing. We may not be able to do it in all 36 states one time, but we will start with a pilot in all six geopolitical zones so that each geopolitical zone will be able to see that model and say, oh, this is what we are. So this is not, you know, uh, rocket science. You can create a model that everyone can see. The problem here is that when the mo money is voted, the people in power take that money and pocket it. And then in the next election, they vote another set of money again, and then the pe people pocket it. And there's no outrage. When I was at Abuja, there was no electricity for 45 minutes. And everybody just folded their arm like nothing happened. There was no outrage. One of the things we want to create is law and order. Our security system, people laugh at us abroad to say Boko Haram and all of these other things, people abducting and taking 200, you know, girls, you know, and what are we doing and so forth. There needs to be law and order. The people that believe in order and order will be put in positions. And by the way, this is not tribalism. The, the best Nigerians from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west, and all of the geopolitical states will be put in power. This is no tribalism. Zero tolerance for tribalism, zero tolerance for discrimination, zero tolerance against women, and zero tolerance against youth. Okay, uh, we've had serious issues with our judiciary, mm -hmm. and uh, policing in this country is also mm -hmm. a major concern. Mm -hmm. If we don't get it right mm -hmm. with the judiciary mm -hmm. and the policing, mm -hmm. then corruption will be very difficult to eradicate. Mm -hmm. I do want to put this together. Here is the reason why you have corruption. Sometimes people arrest people because they are corrupt and put them in jail, thinking that will solve the problem. For example, if you have a policeman that has five children and a wife, and that policeman is only making 25 naira a day, how do you expect that policeman to feed their own children? So the first thing you want to do is to look at the institution of government and re-engineer work processes. Because if you tell the policeman 
that you got to wake up to become an effective policeman without providing the means and all, you know, the tools to do the job, the wages to do the job, and the support to do the job, you're just wasting time. So you start by re-engineering the work processes, you give them decent pay. Then you begin to weed away all of the bad eggs. But when you start by arresting all of the people and said all of the people that have stolen money stand up, there would nobody left to police the Nigerian workforce. You start by dealing with some of the fundamental issues of re-engineering the work processes, of creating institutional government that actually can withstand any corruptions, and by putting together check and balances where people become accountable, by paying them the decent wages, so that when you now say, okay, then I want to now create a system that those people that are willing to do this are ready to do it. Then you can weed away all of these people, and then the people that are there will say, oh, I got to do my job because I'm getting good pay. Number one, I got a good, you know, system of government that I'm working on. But you don't start by just arresting everybody and putting everybody in jail because there will be no one left for you to arrest. You, we discussed about judiciary. You didn't make a mention of that. Yeah, uh, our judiciary system is very slow. Very, very slow. Okay. And not effective. And, and not over the years. It, it is the same thing. One of the things is that you have a system of government that have perpetuated discrimination against the youth and then someone that have been in the jurassic for 50 years will be staying there and there is no inflow of you know succession planning whereby new ideas can come in number one you look at it, the judiciary and says okay what are the best lawyers that we have that to do all of this one of the things we're doing across the country is to be able to reach out to a whole group of engineers lawyers accountants and all of those people people that are have resident knowledge to be able to change the system. Now, it doesn't, your age does not matter what you do, but your value system matters what you do. So, so you can have somebody that is 80 years old that is still very productive and very honest. And you can have someone that is 25 years old that is a crook that is not honest. So the value system that we need to promote across our educational system, across our judiciary, is number one, pay them well first. And then when they go to that bench and sit over there, so the person that is going to be bribing them with 10 million, 15 million, they said, put them in jail. Because they are being paid well. They are being paid well. You, I mean, for example, if you in the, in the, you know, in the first world countries, you attempt to bribe the police, you go to jail immediately. Because the police officer don't care about your bribe because they are being paid well. He will give you a ticket and you'll be going to jail. And attempting to even bribe that officer will send you to jail for almost 25 years because they are paid well and they are trained well. So we need to look at all of the things that make our judiciary inefficient. Because again, some of the you know, uh, magistrates are not trained well. Some of them don't have the resources to support their family. So they got to take bribe you know, to do all of those things. You got to solve the fundamental problem in the government, which include wages, which include the institution, the technology that they are using, and the system that they are using. We are still carrying files. I see we are in 1949. And the files with pins. And then people are not even knowing how to use computer to be able to, you know, store the data files that we have in the judiciary. When you go back there and say, what was the case file, you know, for these things, it takes months and months for them to find it. Whereas you can go to the computer and type this out and it will give you all of the history when you are in the, in the first world country. We are still in the dark ages. We want to bring Nigeria to the ages of the future by implementing the best practices because Nigeria is behind. This is not about money, this is about bringing the best practices. Go ahead and check my background. Go to ndcp.ng, that's our website, www.ndcp.ng. You will see that we have done all of this and this is not about trying to do this. It's not by, about my own fame and pleasure and so forth. People I want to say, why are you doing this? Why are you leaving your wife and your children all of that? Because if we don't do this today, our children don't have a future. Fantastic. Okay. I'm going to ask you this. For any government to be able to be, to be, able to be successful, mm -hmm. the civil service in Nigeria is a big albatross, a big issue. Mm -hmm. The bureaucracy in the civil service mm -hmm. is so much that things don't work mm -hmm. like it should be. Mm -hmm. How will you reform the civil service? First of all, again, the civil service, you know, I, 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 let me give you an example. I went to get my, uh, uh, you know, tax ID. 
and the line was long from here to Timbuktu. And then the guy says, so I want to give you a preference because you are an executive. I said, no, I want to stay on the line. There's no reason why you should be giving me a preference to the guy who was ahead of me. I said, I want to stay here and see how long it takes. He said, no, 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 so you are, you are an executive, I want to take you down to go see the director so that they can process your you know, you know, tax ID card and everything else so that you don't. I said, no, I want to stay here and watch what is in the line. I stood down there and the line was crawling and crawling and crawling and crawling after about an hour you know, to two hours. We crawl ourselves to the guy when they there. And then the lady said, I'm sorry, uh, my computer doesn't work because the light is off. So you guys need to sit over here. And then she was, you know, busy eating potato chips. So I, she didn't know who I was. And then I, we stood down there for another 30 minutes and so forth. So I wore a suit. I removed my suit and I was sitting down there. And then later on, I said, Madam, when are we going to be served? He said, well, you may have to come back tomorrow because the light is off. And then, then the light finally came back up. And then she was going around and around and looking for the data and so forth. And I said, I want to try to get my tax ID. He said, well, you are not on our record. You need to fill out this form and we will call you in about seven days. And it may be about 14 days. And there were pies and pies and pies and pies of paper. See, being an engineer by background, I have re-engineered work processes. I have a track record where I have been able to take stack of papers and I make them one piece. Based on my experience, I know what to be done. So this is not rocket science. So those pies of style of files can all be put in a computer system that no one can see and then you can press a button and it will take you to exactly what you need to do. And then when you get electricity, all of those you know, things that she was having problem with. And then people that were waiting in line, their line, the queue will be all short. And I asked them, I said, how long has these people? I said, some people have come here for a week. So we'll call you in seven days. She didn't know who I was and I didn't see the director. And then, by the time we left, and I said, I need to see the director. So I asked the guy to take me down to the back, and then we took the back door to go see the director. And I asked the director, I said, do you know how long I have been here? Oh, I said, welcome to the club. He said, some of these people that I have been asking for their tax ID and so forth, some of them are going to, we are working in, you know, 2007. We may get to 2013 in Maria, another two years. That is the system we have. It's a cake. It is not acceptable, and with that system bring lack of productivity, bring inefficiency, bring corruption, brings all of the issues that we go into. So I have seen this, I've experienced it. I have been to all this. I can tell you, I went to an hospital, and I see somebody just sitting there lamenting, walking away, and the nurse just walking by them with no sense of urgency and you know, to take care of them. This was in the north, it's in the south. I was in the airport, every, you know, Nigerian airports, see punk holes. And when I, I mean, Lagos, you know me, everywhere. It's across the entire country. So they all need to be reformed. And that is what this is all about. It's about coming to bring best practices to our country without blaming anybody. Going for a presidential slot. Mm -hmm. Means a lot. Mm -hmm. Means a lot. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, what, what I mean is, are you a money back? Are you going to get the money to, to run for the presidency? Mm -hmm. Well, first of all, a lot of people put money ahead of ideas and the courage of leadership convention that works. When we started to try to register a party, they said, forget you. You can never get this party registered. You are in Nigeria. Just pack your bag and go back there and enjoy yourself in where you came from. We said we are going to get our party registered. And we want an independent, non biased, non corrupt party with strong value system that Nigerians will support all over the world to be resident in Nigeria and to be transformed from us to our younger generation. That's what we want. And we want that solid party. We started, almost took us grinding through, grinding through, grinding through, grinding through, all kinds of bureaucracy and all of those other things with patients and all of those other stuff. And then testing us, there are no way that we are going to give up. Then January 10th, they finally said, well, you've arrived. 
here's your certificate, you got your party registered. You, you are now in Nigeria Democratic Congress Party. And that's why we're here today. What I'm saying here is, up to now, we are not in this race to quit. We are in this race to win. And we are not in this race to be intimidated. We are in this race with courage and conviction. We are not in this race, you know, to be able to say, oh, because of this and so forth. Even if it is one naira that we have, we are going to the finish line on this race. And so far, we still can get a cup of tea and we still can, you know, have our food. We are not going to be bought by money or pleasure. We are here, the power of ideas and the power of conviction and the power of changing what is wrong in our own motherland is what is important. There is nothing that is going to change the way we are going. The destiny is set, the mission is defined, the vision is clear. And our vision is to unify Nigeria, transform it to a truly democratic country where there's law and order, where there's electricity, where there's infrastructure, where there are jobs, where there's you know, single taxpayer healthcare system, and where every Nigerian can be proud again and will make every Nigerian and our creator proud. That is the vision. We want to get this done. No money. See, let me tell you this. When I was in one of the largest pharmaceutical companies in the entire world, they offer us $50 million to write a report to blame the system that was happening against the consumers. I told all my consultants, look there and walk away because these people are corrupt and they are not the right set of people for us to work with. We walked away. In six months, not only with that company in trouble, but those people that were involved, they were arrested and they were all one by one in need. Nigeria, we've seen a lot of legislation for regional government. Mm -hmm. this, uh, federalism is not really working mm -hmm. because government for the people, by the people, should mm -hmm. come from the grassroots. Mm -hmm. And now people are legislating for regional government. Mm -hmm. How do you want to? Tackle that when you get to sit up out. First of all, one of the things we have to be very careful about is people agitating for something that is down the road and when they have not fixed some of the fundamental problem. For example, how can you agitate for self governance of a police in the state when the entire police force is corrupt? when you have not created the infrastructure or provided the wages for the police officer and create an infrastructure for an effective police to function? How can you agitate you know, for self-control and self-empowerment of a school system that is broken, that has not even had a leg to stand on, and you want to turn that back to a state that has no resources? Let me tell you one of the things that I found in some of the states, without mentioning them, because I don't want them to think I'm biased. Because the same problem in the north, the same problem in the west, in the south, and south-south. Some of the teachers have not been paid for two years. Did you hear what I'm saying? They have not been paid their regular salary for two years. And then they said, if you don't come to work, you're fired. And how can you turn the educational system to a government that have not even paid teachers? And education is the far bone of the nation. So the first thing you want to do is to create a system where a governor realizes that he's not a king, he's a servant. That the president of the country realizes he's not a king, but a servant of the people. So when you have a system where people now realize we are there to serve the people, and that we are there to take care of the people, and that system is functioning well, then you begin to empower state to be able to take self-control. But if you begin to do that today, you are going to create a chaos where the inefficiency is going to go from bad to worse. So you want to make the system continually work first and then gradually empower the states to take over. But you don't want to start doing that and say, well, state, uh, begin to have your own school system. And then the government that have not been paying teachers for two, three years, what are they going to do? They're not going to pay them for five years. 
And then they're going to lock up all the headmaster and the principals, and they all will not be able to do what they're supposed to be doing. That is the problem with that thinking. And then people that say, well, uh, we want this. Uh, you know, I talked to my friend. I have a lot of friends uh, you know, from the East. You know, People say, well, yeah, we need Biafra. We need Oduduwa. We need the Republic of Sofas. I said, wait a minute. When, when what you have today is not working, the same people that you want to give you Oduduwa state, or give you Biafra state, or give you, you know, North Central state, and all of this something for you to be empowered, are going to be told, you need to make the system work. My brother and sister from the south, from the east, and from the north, they have the capability to be able to do the things when the things are working well. So trying to succeed and says, I want to become a Biafra or do what state or North Central is not really the problem. Because we all have common issues. We want food, we want jobs, we want electricity, we want affordable health care, we want a good education for our children. And my brother and sister in the north, they can all be brought together to get this done for us. Okay, a uh, major challenge in Nigeria is security. Mm -hmm. uh, we have issue of Boko Haram, mm -hmm. we have Fulani X-Men mm -hmm. uh, and farmers, we mm -hmm. have so much of kidnapping mm -hmm. all around the country, mm -hmm. and yet we have a government mm -hmm. and who, who, who will be trying, mm -hmm. trying but not getting it to her heart. Mm -hmm. How do you fix the security challenges in Nigeria since you don't have the kind of military background? First of all, you need to uh, don't misunderstand this young man sitting in front of you. There will be law and order in Nigeria. Law and order in Nigeria. I say that again. There will be law and order. This will not be a country that will be run by hooligans. And let me tell you this. Let me take one piece at a time. The issue of the Hesman killing, you know, you know, people in Bono State and all of these other locations, that is an agricultural problem of being able to create a system of consensus management. For example, the, we need the cattle to feed the people. But we don't need the Hesman killing, you know, average Nigerian before they can eat cattle. In our geopolitical zone and in every state, you got to make provisions for the herdsman to be able to have an agricultural land where they can raise their cattle. And those things are within boundaries. And then those cattle are fed by the grasses that are raised in those areas. But when you do not make provisions for the herdsman to be able to have those kinds of things, what they do? They run all over the place. They become lawless. So it's, a, it's, it's, a, it's an issue of law and order. It, might, it may be very simplistic to you, but it's a problem that can be solved by getting to create an agricultural system that defines the boundaries for them. Not only just for cattle, for goats, for chicken, for all of the things that we produce. You want to make sure that there are places where people can get this thing done. But there have been a lot of argument mm -hmm. that if you allow the full and the people to come in, they will dominate the entire state. That's, that's, that, that's why we have the integration law. No, 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 that's not correct. That's not correct. Just the fact that the Fulani people are most of the herdsmen doesn't mean that they're going to dominate the case. But that has been their tradition. You see, just like you will go to the West, people were, you know, you know, you know farming cocoa. And then you go to, down to somewhere in the south, people were farming rubber. And because of that is in their heritage, you don't want to be painting the tribe to those kind of problems. The problem that you have is an agricultural system of demand and supply, whereby you need to provide you know, the herdsmen you know, an agricultural zone where they are protected to raise the cattle. And then they are able to graze those cattle and feed them. And then there are boundaries and there's law and order. And the people are therefore taken care of. So you don't have them roaming around. When I was at Abuja, let me tell you at Abuja, there was a young guy, almost seven years old. He had a whole bunch of cattle going through the main street in Abuja, the, the capital of Nigeria. The capital of Nigeria. Main street with cattle going through the main street. It is unacceptable. Those cattle should be in a defined geopolitical zone that is meant to raise cows that are made to guide them and feed them and protect them. And the herdsman that is raising them knows that they own that land, they are using you know, the feed there to feed the people, and the people will be protected. It's very simple. Now, here's the deal. Some of the people that own those cattle are some of your rich people. 
they are perpetuating these difficulties because they don't want solution to them. And they, they are supporting some of these other things. And they are not looking for some of the solutions that will practically work. Some of them know what to do. Some of them own these cattles, millions of them. And they are paying behind the scene. Those corruptions need to be eradicated. Okay, fantastic. Um, let's look at your party now. Mm -hmm. um, what is your manifesto? Mm -hmm. What's the intent and purpose of the party? We have six key areas that, you know, you can go to www.ndcp.ng and our constitution, our manifesto is right down there. You can download them, you can read them. But just quickly, let me give you a summary of them. Economy. We want to create jobs. At minimum, 7 million jobs a year. Our goal is that for four years, we want to keep the country whole. Where a lot of the youths that are roaming around today do not have jobs, we have jobs. I mean, by vocational jobs. I mean, jobs, you know, you know, for the educated, you know, masses that are around. You got Nigerians that have master's degree that are driving taxi cab. And you got, you know, Nigerians with PhDs that are, you know, hawking in the street with no jobs. We want to solve those jobs. We want to create infrastructure projects, high speed rail, get better roads. Now, people will say, well, people have said this before. Now, because people have said this before, they didn't do it. That's what then, but not now. Those were those people, not me. Go back and check my record. Go to ndcp.ng and see what I have done. I have taken on the big, you know, cooperations. I have taken on the big leaders. Every major organization in the United States or everywhere in the world, I coach some of the top executives. I have taken on the big people that people say, well, you cannot you know, do this. So go back and check my record. You will see that we are not just saying this. We are saying this of what we do. And we are trying to do this with the unity of the spirit among all Nigerians from the north, south, east, and west. We are going to harness that brain power to get that. So infrastructure, project, healthcare, education. For example, the rich, when they are sick, they fly on a private plane, and they go to London to go get treatment. That is a shame. Or they fly to Switzerland. Some of them fly to South Africa. Let me tell you this. Just recently, a Nigerian surgeon was able to take a fetus that was in a, a woman's stomach that had brain tumor, brought that fetus out, removed that damage to the brain and implanted that fetus back to the brain and the child was delivered safely. Nigerians have the brain power, they have the intellectual know-how to do this. So I'm not saying that I'm going to be doing this myself. I'm calling on the collective wisdom and knowledge of all Nigerians all over the world. Let me tell you this, when you don't even know what supply and demand is, when you have not taken basic economic, what business do you have running the largest economy in Africa, for heaven's sake? Because the economy that we have in, in Nigeria is a very complex economic system. And when we have the Naira, you know, now 365 to 1, some of the people don't even know how to change that dynamics. I know how to change it. Because I have worked for Export Import Bank. I have worked for organizations that have been able to do this for different you know, developing countries and de developed countries. I know how to get this done. And that's what we are trying to do for our country. We have offices now in all 36 states, including Abuja. And we are building that structure one at a time. Now. All of the offices in the 36 states may not be functioning to their maximum capacity, but if you go down to measure of them, most of them are functioning at about 80% capacity. Over the next two months, we want to be at 100%. A lot of the people have said a lot of things over the years, and a lot of the things they've said, they've not been able to deliver it. So I'm not here to afford them, but I'm here to focus on solutions. But one of the things that you have to know about me as a leader. I know how to unite people. I know how to lead people. We have a clear vision. I have the experience in public and private sector organizations. I have worked for all of the large companies that you can count up, whether they are high tech, whether they are telephone companies, whether they are, you name it. So I bring that experience to solve the problem. 
Now, people are asking me, say, with all of the resources that you have, with all of the things, why are you putting yourself through this? One, I love my country. And I want to protect, you know, the interest of the country. We want to bring Nigeria to the 21st century because Nigeria is about 50 years behind. And some people say we would be better off still be under the colonial rule. No. Time has come. We got the brain power to be able to transform our country. If all Nigerians, both abroad as well as home, will rise up to the challenge, you know, to take one week off if you're abroad, get your PVC, which is the voter registration card, take the application, come here and vote. Not only that, go and monitor those votes to make sure that the right person get employed if you cannot come home. And then once the government start, come and submit your resume so you can get one of those jobs and make a difference. That is what we are asking them to do. We are making that sacrifice to make sure that our children have a future and that the system that we have in the government can serve you know, effectively. I want to thank those, by the way, contrary to what people might think, that have served us. Some of them may have gone through some difficulty, including the thieves that have stolen our money, because their days may be reckoned. Because by the time we have done with our own system, there will be no money to steal, because there will be accountability, there will be ownership for results. That is what we need. So I'm not here to say I'm going to put all the thieves in jail, but I want to create a system that will prevent thieves from stealing anymore so that we can create a system that is efficient. Nigerian youths are the most dynamic one. If you go right now down to the street, you will see the youths busting their energy, trading, and trying to sell this and do that and do that just to earn a living. The youth are not lazy. The youth don't have jobs. They don't have meaningful education. They don't have meaningful support. They don't have role models. Our job is to create jobs for those youths so that they can channel their energy and then to be able to produce in the system. They are not lazy at all. That is a statement that is not correct. It is not true. Nigerians are one of the most hardworking people. And don't forget, I was one a youth. The youth of today becomes the leaders of tomorrow. When I was a youth, I was a dishwasher. But that didn't make me, you know, so somebody to call me lazy. Because then I, that would be offensive to me. Because I wasn't lazy. I was a dishwasher washing dishes so that I can earn a living to pay my school fees. That's what I was doing. So to call me lazy as a dishwasher, I that would be an offense to me. Nigerians are very energetic and they are very productive people. And they are the ones that you need to train to become the leaders of tomorrow. Because, granted, one of the reasons we're doing this is to create a succession planning. That's the reason why we registered Nigerian Democratic Congress Party, www.ndcp.ng. Go down there because we want that party in the future to be where the children will live on the value system we have created. So that is the reason for it. So we don't want you know, anybody to come and blackmail them and brush them up. You are lazy. You can't get this thing done. No, that's not right. What's your membership drive like? Our membership drive is going well. We have a rally coming up in one of the states, and we are told that there will be 15, 15, 15 to 20,000 uh, people. And then we have to kind of keep the size you know, a little low. And then as the momentum continues, you know, we see. But this race is about Nigerian people choosing us. And but we have chosen to bring our best practices, but we want Nigeria to now choose us to lead. of the people are running away from politics.